I have my mom and dad. Dad's sitting back there this morning. Um, and it, if you had asked me a week ago if I'd have been nervous when I got up here with my dad, the greatest man in my whole world sitting back there, I'd have probably said yes, but this morning it gives me more peace than you could possibly imagine to have him sitting in here this morning uh, and still be healthy. He's the man that brought me to church. I had a good Christian example set for me my entire life. I was brought to church. I was put before the pastor. I heard the word of God. I accepted Jesus. I tried to do the same for my kids. And by the grace of God, my daughter's sitting here this morning. She's been saved. She's accepted Christ. My son has been saved. He's accepted Christ. I did none of this, okay? It was all by the power of God. And I want to thank him this morning for saving me, for saving my family, for letting me still have my parents and my family, letting me have my best friends sitting back there this morning listening to, and for just another day of being healthy, being able to be a father, a husband, a son, a friend, a brother, uh, and, and hopefully be able to share uh, a few words with y'all this morning. Um, pray for me as... as uh, we talk about prayer uh, this morning. Um, these testimonies that we've had already this morning about, uh, about the good things God's done for us. I heard an old preacher a couple of weeks ago talking. He was telling a story, and, and it was about a revival service that they had had. It had been going on for a number of meetings. And, uh, and one night they had brought out a, a van or a, a couple of vans full of, of uh, residents from one of the local uh, I don't know if it was an assisted living place or a nursing home or, or, or group home or what environment it was, but it was some, some uh, people who had some uh, uh, physical disabilities, cognitive impairments, whatever, uh, whatever uh, their particular uh, instance was. And he said, as he sat there and he watched these people in the crowd, he said, the ones that were worshiping God the hardest and most fervently and praising God the, the, the most and the loudest were those people sitting there in the wheelchair. And he said he had this one fella, he said it, that he found out later that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that he had cerebral palsy. And said that man all of a sudden at once just lurched himself out of his chair forward. And he started crawling toward the altar. He said when he first went down, he thought, oh, no, you know, he's, he's fallen and, and he's hurt. But he said that man comes crawling up to the altar, and, then, you know, he wasn't too far back through the crowd. But he said by the time he got around the corner of the front pew, I was on the floor with him. And he said, I thought to myself, if he's going to crawl to the altar, I want to know what he's got to say when he gets there. <laughs> and he said he crawled all the way to the altar, and he raised his hands, and he said in the best voice he could, God's been good to me. And I think if any of us in here can't say that this morning, you know, I think we need to, to pray really hard because I think God's been good to every one of us just by letting us be upright this morning, able to be here, able to take nourishment, uh, able to, to, to function, able to be saved, able to still live in a free country where we can come and worship God uh, as we desire, as we see fit. I can still, my, I can still raise my children. You know, by, by my moral standards, my moral values, uh, bring them to church uh, and, uh, and let them learn about God. We still live in that country today. And we're going to talk about prayer this morning. Uh, and and I, think, uh, I think that prayer is one of, the, uh, one of the absolute best things, one of the absolute best tools, the best tool uh, that we have uh, as Christians um, uh, to go about and live our lives. I was looking in the bulletin here. And uh, the title of the Sunday School lesson was Start With Prayer. And it, uh, it does all start with prayer. And this, this, there's something in this bulletin here I wanted to read to y'all. It says, He answers. It says, I know not by what methods rare, but this I know, God answers prayer. I know not when He sends the word that tells His fervent prayer is heard. I know it cometh soon or late, therefore we need to pray and wait. I know not if the blessing sought will come in just the guise I thought. I'll leave my prayers with him alone, whose will is wiser than my own. And that's Eliza M. Hickok uh, in the king's business. And God does answer prayer. He answers prayer in his time. He answers prayer in his way. And, and you know, for, for times that we have thought or maybe felt like, you know, God didn't answer my prayer. God didn't hear my prayer. God heard your prayer. And sometimes an unanswered prayer is an answer in itself. 
you know, if, if, if you don't get what, uh, what maybe you felt like you wanted or, or you know, you know what, <clears throat> I heard somebody say, you know, I, I'm pretty guilty of, of, you know, telling God now, that, you know, this is what I need, Lord, and this is how I figure you ought to do it. You know, instead of just, you know, asking God for, for, uh, for the desires of your heart and then letting him work in his time and his way without, you know, trying to interrupt it. Because if, I, if it's left up to Matthew to figure it out, I'd mess it up, uh, I, I have no doubt. Um, so we're going to get into uh, just a little bit of scripture this morning, and I'm going to take just a little something. I, I really enjoyed the discussion uh, that I heard this morning in the class, and I had actually gone over just a little bit of this um, so that we could kind of highlight it and hit it again uh, a little bit during, uh, during the worship service. Because it's a couple of things that, that I feel like are important. Uh, and I tried to figure out this week and study, and, and I tried to look, and, and I prayed, and I, I you know, looked for something that I thought that I wanted to use or a story that I wanted to use or, or uh, you know, one of my favorite parables in the Bible or one of my favorite stories in the Bible. And the only thing that I could, that I could come up with was I didn't have any idea. And I, I, you know, I was, I was struggling. You know, it's, it's, you know, Gary says, would you, would you mind to, to lead the service? And absolutely. I couldn't answer no to that, you know, if, if, if I'm able to be here for, for any reason. And then the flesh starts thinking after I tell him, yes, I'll do it. I can't do that. <laughs> I, can't, I, you know, like, like Brother James said this morning, nervous when you get up here, it just goes away. And it's not because of me, it's because of God. You know, and I pray that God just move me out of the way and, 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 and let, me, uh, let me be able to, uh, to speak for him. So, the Bible fell open, literally, when I started to open it up and, and look through it one more time. And I looked down and it was in Philippians chapter 4. And my daughter's got a uh, sign up in her room, in her bedroom. It's Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. And when I, when I got ready to open the Bible and I flipped it open and I, laid it, and I let it lay on the table open, I looked down and there was that verse. And that was God's way of saying, okay, now whatever you thought about, whatever you had planned, whatever, you know, might have been moving around in your mind, just forget about it and this is it right here. This is what we're going to talk about this morning. And in Philippians chapter 4, beginning in verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the reading of your word, Lord. We thank you for this day and this service. We thank you for this time that we're able to come together and study on a portion of your word. Pray, Lord, that you'd close my mouth and move me out of the way, Lord, and that I might be able to, to say whatever you would have me to uh, this morning to this crowd, Lord. I pray forgiveness of sin, Lord, make me fit to stand here before, uh, before these people uh, and speak to them this morning. Uh, lead God and direct all that we do. Uh, these favors we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so in keeping with the lesson that we had this morning, uh, I just thought it kind of not ironic, but obviously, you know, this was, was way above my head. Uh, that our Sunday school lesson just happens to be it starts with prayer, and then when, when I'm trying to figure out what God would want me to talk about this morning, uh, it says, be careful for nothing, but in everything, prayer. That's not an accident. That's God saying, okay, we're going to have a lesson in Sunday school that starts with, you know, that talks about how it starts with prayer, and then we're going to finish up the service talking about prayer. That's what God wants. That's what we're going to do. Uh, and our Sunday school lesson this morning, uh, it said it, it, it starts with prayer. Um, in 1 Timothy, and I'm going to read this. Uh, you don't need to flip there, but in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2, in verse 1, it said, I exhort therefore, or urge, uh, implore, uh, meanings of uh, the word exhort. I urge you therefore, I exhort therefore, that first of all, so like we said, it starts with prayer. 
So the first thing is, it starts with prayer. First of all, pray. Okay? When you, get a, when you wake up in the morning, before you get out of bed, pray. I don't always remember to do it. I tell my kids every day before they go to school, you know, say your prayers before you start your day. And I mean that earnestly. Pray before you do anything today. You know, start your day with prayer. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek God first, and then everything else in your day will fall into the place that he has for it to fall. If you try to go about your day on your own, you'll find yourself speaking to God later, but it'll be, okay, now here I am. You know, instead of starting your day with, okay, you know, what would you have me to do today, Lord? What would you have me to do? Would, please, put, please put somebody in my way, you know, that I, could, that I could speak to, that I could talk to, that I could maybe do something to, to brighten their day, to give them an encouraging word, to, you know, help guide them in a path to where they could come to know you. What would you have me do today, Lord? Where would you have me go? You know, put someone in my way. Put someone in my way that I could witness to. Someone that I could help out in some way. How often do we pray that? I know I don't pray it as often as I should, you know. And, and James was talking this morning in the Sunday school lesson about his prayer life not being what, uh, what it should be. Mine's not either. I'll, be the, I'll raise my hand first. I'll raise them both, you know. I don't think any of us pray as much as we need to, and that was a wonderful witness you gave a while ago. You know, prayer without ceasing. Prayer without ceasing is difficult because we're distracted by a lot of things, okay? But we need to try to pray about all things before we do them, you know. It's sometimes easier to pray before we do something than it is to turn around and ask God's forgiveness for it. I'm thankful we have forgiveness of sin if we confess our sins, that he's faithful and just to forgive us. And to cleanse us. But if we first pray, maybe we'll be able to avoid that situation to begin with. You know, lead us not into temptation. Uh, this continues on. For, uh, so first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks or thanksgiving be made for all men. So prayer being a, the, the first priority in our lives. You know, once we've accepted Christ, we've become believers. Prayer needs to be our top priority in our life. Prayer about uh, our relationship with God, growing further in our relationship with God, getting closer to Him, and being able to, uh, to witness uh, on behalf of Christ to others. Um, and like James said this morning in the Sunday school class, that veil was rent from, the, from top to bottom, okay? Before that, people weren't allowed to go into the temple, you know. Only the priests could go into the temple, now, once that veil was torn away, that symbol, the opening, to make it so that we can go before a holy God without uh, any intermediate. You know, we don't have to have a priest or, or someone uh, go on our behalf. We can bow before a holy God ourselves at the throne of grace and pray. And Jesus Christ is the one that made that path for us uh, so that we could do that. Um, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, I like this verse. It says, let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace. Boldly to me means without fear. It doesn't mean in an arrogant manner. It means that you can come without fear before the throne of grace. In other words, bow before a holy God in reverence, but not afraid to speak to him and pour out our hearts and pour out our thoughts because he knows them already. He just wants to have that communion with us. He wants to have that intimate relationship with us. He wants, to, he wants us to be uh, connected to him on the personal level that he's connected to us with. Because God's not gone anywhere. Anytime any of us have strayed away or, or not walked down the path that we should walk down, we've not done what we should do. You know, God's told us, hey, you know, I, I'm bumping you in this direction. This is what I want you to do. And maybe we didn't respond to it. He's not gone anywhere, folks. He's still right there. He's waiting on us. He's waiting on us in the morning to call on him, you know, to help guide us through the day. He's waiting for us uh, to, uh, to approach his throne of grace and, uh, and commune with him. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Now, God knows our needs. He knows what they are. Uh, he knows we need food, we need shelter, we need clothes. Uh, and 
He provides all these things for us. It's like James said this morning. Uh, there's never been a time in my life when I was hungry. Now you can look at me and tell that. But there's, been a, you know, there's never been a time in my life that I was actually hungry. And I'm not talking about the belly growling after it's been eight hours since you eat. I mean actual hunger where your body becomes malnourished because of starvation. I've never been that way. You know, someone in here may have. Uh, most, of, most of us have not. We've never known that, uh, that problem. We have had our needs provided for us, provided by holy God. So God knows their needs. But he also wants to hear our concerns. He wants to know what I'm afraid of, what I'm anxious about, what I am fearful of, you know, what, uh, uh, what I'm concerned about in the circumstances that I'm in. He wants us to discuss these things with him. And he's waiting there for us to do it. Uh, in 1 Peter chapter 5, um, in verse 7, uh, it says, Casting all your cares on him, for he careth for you. Now, when you look at, uh, when you look at uh, verse 6 here in, in Philippians chapter 4, be careful for nothing. Now, that don't mean that the kids can jump on the four-wheeler and take off wide open and, and without any kind of uh, reservation whatsoever. You know, it doesn't mean that, that, you know, we can do just any foolish thing and... and, and uh, you know, everything's going to be okay. That's not what be careful for nothing uh, means in this context. Be careful for nothing here means do not worry, do not fret, do not fear, do not be anxious for the things that are going on uh, in your life. But pray about all these things, okay? I have been uh, anxious, I have been worried, I have been scared, I have been afraid, I have been all these things, and that was just this week. <laughs> you know, at some point, we all find ourselves in that circumstance where we have things that make us feel afraid. They make us feel anxious. They make us feel worried, uncertain, uh, unworthy, un, you know, unassured un, un, uh, uh, of, of our path forward. We all have those things in our lives. And the Bible says here, be careful for nothing, but instead do what? In everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. So when I'm afraid because my mom's sick, I'm anxious because, you know, I want to be a good father, you know, uh, I'm, I'm worried because my daughter's gone with, with friends. I'm, you know, when, when I have all these things that happen, you know, that, that affect me, uh, that's when God wants me to come and talk to him about it. You know, I have come over here when we were working, uh, and I'll just tell you this is a test. I have come over here when we were working, uh, working on these sets and things down here, and and I've come inside and I've come upstairs and I've got down in this altar and I've just prayed by myself. And it's not because I was too weak to continue on my own physically, but it's because I was too weak to continue on my own spiritually. And I needed God's help. And I needed Him to show me which direction I needed to go. Now, I draw every breath by the grace of God, as we all do. We have to have that, that help to, we have to have that blessing, we have to have that, uh, that continued uh, sustenance from God to be able to live physically. But in order for us to be, to be close to him spiritually and sometimes to be able to continue on spiritually, we have to talk to, to God, we have to communicate with him, we have to seek his guidance, we have to seek his will because when, uh, when Jesus gave an example of prayer, and he told us how we should approach uh, prayer. He said, after this manner, pray ye, our Father. So we, we, we address in him as our Heavenly Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In a reverent manner, almighty, all-powerful, omnipotent God. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Doesn't say anything in the example Jesus gave about Matthew. Tell God what you want to do, you know what you want, what you think should happen, 
you know, how you think uh, he should deal with this or how you think he should deal with that. It says, thy will be done. God, your will be done, not mine. On earth as it is in heaven. So God, have your will. Have your will in this service. Have your will in this situation. Have your will in my life. Show me what you would have me do. Thy will be done. Then ask for what? Give us this day our daily bread. The daily blessings of life. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us of our sin. Forgive me of my sins. Help us to walk closer in our relationship with you. As we forgive those who trespass against us. So we're, we're to forgive others uh, of their trespasses. Okay, Lead us not into temptation. In other words, please, Lord, keep me from temptation. Please keep me out of situations. Please rebuke the devil from around me. Please keep me from making bad decisions to begin with. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So when we look at the example that Christ said, after this manner, pray ye. I don't find in there where it says, you know, tell God how you think he ought to do something. Because he's going to work that out in his time, in his way, for us, in the way he sees fit. Because all things work what? To the good for them that love the Lord. Everything that we see, every circumstance that we see, everything we come across, even though we might not understand it, you know, is working toward God's ultimate plan for us if we just trust in it. You know, like Alex said this morning in Sunday school, we have to trust that all things are working together for good, even if we can't see it. And, you know, and oftentimes we cannot. But again, in verse 6, it says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. In other words, be thankful for your circumstances. Okay? Now, you might lose your job at work, but like, like Pam said, there's, there's another one waiting on you, you know. So the, the power went off and it was cold in the house last night. Were you hungry too? You know what I mean? We always have something to be thankful for if we look for it. Or we can constantly live with negativity and only focus on the negatives in our lives. First and foremost, thankful for grace and salvation. Secondly, thankful for health and, and being able to be upright and, and function and communicate with others. We always have something to be thankful for. Like the fellow that crawled down front of the altar to say, God's been good to me. God's been very good to me. And we need to thank him for that. Let your requests be made known unto God. In other words, he wants to hear the desires of our heart. Okay? He wants us to communicate uh, with him in that, uh, in that manner. Um, in Psalms chapter uh, 55, in verse 22, it says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord. So in other words, cast it off. Now sometimes that's hard to do. I, I'll just tell you. I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one. Uh, but sometimes it's hard to put that burden down. You know, when, when we carry it, uh, when we carry it on our shoulders, we have a, a, a personal ownership of it. I, I, you know, you think about, you think about things that... Uh, that are weighing on you. Maybe things you've done, things you've said, things you should have said that you didn't. Uh, and all those things, they, they, they can pile up on you. It says in, in, in Psalms 55, chapter, uh, or 55, verse 22, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. In other words, cast your cares away. Pray. Talk to God. Let him know the desires of your heart. Then cast whatever that burden of what, you know, whatever that burden you were carrying was away. Just like you never shouldered it to begin with. Sometimes it's hard to do. Sometimes it's hard to do. But that's what the, that's what the Bible instructs us to do. Um, and in, in verse 7 it says, And the peace of God, which, pass, which passeth all understanding, Shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, we've talked before and heard preachers talk before. I've heard many preachers talk about it. About the peace that 
God's people seem to have when it comes their time to die. And, you know, not to shift from, from prayer to, to death, but that peace that God gives those people can only come from God. And that same peace that is offered with that dying grace uh, for, for people who are, washed in, who are washed in the blood of Jesus, we can have that same peace if we allow it to happen when we cast our cares off on the Lord. Once we pray about something, God wants us to put it down. Okay? He wants us to make our concerns, make our desires, make our cares known to him, and then cast them off. And, and, and when I think about that for myself, it almost makes me wonder if I pray about something, earnestly pray about something, and then I continue to carry it around and worry about it, does God wonder if I'm questioning his ability to take care of it? Does he wonder about my faith and his ability to answer that prayer in his time and in the way he sees fit? Cast your burdens upon the Lord and he shall sustain you. <clears throat> and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. In John chapter 14, verse 27, it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So God tells us, that, or Jesus tells us that we should have peace. The peace of God through Christ Jesus. Isn't that what prayer is? Being able to approach the throne of grace and, and talk to God and cast off our burdens and cast off our cares and take a weight off our shoulders and, and, and take that, uh, that pressure off our chest and, and cast all that stuff away and trust God and trust him that he is going to work whatever it is out, not in Matthew's time and not according to Matthew's will, but in his time and in his will and his way to whatever is best for the good, the overall good, for Matthew and the glory of God's kingdom. Not because of what I want, but because of what I need that he sees that I need. And we need to, uh, we need to take advantage of, uh, of that ability to approach, uh, to approach the throne of grace. <clears throat> this prayer that we talk about, uh, there's four things in here that it says in the, uh, in the Sunday school book that I thought was... Uh, that I thought was good to, to mention. It says petition. A petition represents our personal request to God. So in other words, what I feel like I need, you know, what I'm, I, I feel like I'm concerned about. Um, what is most personal to me? Prayer, just a general term that describes all types of prayer, all of our communication with God anytime we bow before Him in reverence, uh, uh, in prayer to Him. Intercession being prayers for others, prayers on behalf of others. You know, when someone requests prayer, and we need to do our best to pray earnestly for these people. And prayers of thanksgiving, which is gratitude, uh, an attitude uh, or posture of prayer. Um, we're called to pray on everybody, like James said in Sunday school. Sometimes it's hard to pray for, uh, for those that you see that are living in an evil way. But God calls on us to do that, okay? God burdened the hearts of our, of our elected officials, you know. It's hard to call some of them leaders, I know. But God, please burden their hearts, you know, that they would turn away from, from sin and turn away from the devil and, and turn their lives back towards you. You know, it's the only hope of revival that we have as a nation. Uh, but we need to pray for those people. We need to pray for the lost. We need to pray, pray, pray. Pray about everything. And not be afraid to approach, boldly approach, it says, the throne of grace. In other words, don't be afraid to pray. Don't be afraid to talk to God. Don't be afraid to let him know the desires of your heart. But boldly go before him uh, to the throne of grace. 
that we can obtain mercy uh, and find grace to help in our time of need. Um, and that's what I've got for you all this morning. Does anybody have anything they'd like to add? Testimony they want to give? Anything they want to say? That's a good way to fall asleep. Good way to fall asleep talking to God. Ain't no better way. Because you might fall asleep talking to him and wake up looking at him. You know, like Max said in the Sunday school class, nobody knows their last hour, you know, their last second, their last minute. None of us know. So it's a good thing to fall asleep talking to God in case uh, the next thing you know is you're waking up looking at him. You know. Anybody else have anything? Well, thank you all for coming out this morning uh, and uh, giving a listen. I hope you got a blessing uh, from it. Um, as, we, uh, as we go out this week, uh, continue to pray for the pastor and his family as they travel and, and continue to pray for, uh, for this country and, and for the lost, especially in our communities. Um, pray for me. Uh, that I would do what God had me do in, in whatever situation, whatever circumstance I come across, and that I would be more like Jesus and less like Matthew. Uh, I think we could all say that. Uh, we could all say that prayer, and and uh, and we could all uh, uh, stand a little bit of that in our lives, or a whole lot of it. Uh, so, anybody else have anything? All right, if y'all stand, we'll be dismissed. Um,